Now, whenever you start talking about uh, movies, everybody loves talking about movies. When you start talking about the business of movies, sometimes people kind of tune out. But you got to understand that the business of movies is the, the mouth of the river that the ocean feeds all the goodness into the rivers, right? Like that's where everything comes from. That's where everything starts and finishes. It starts at the business end and sees where it goes down. And there's nothing in the entertainment industry right now on the business side that is as fascinating as the upcoming acquisition of Warner Media that is being taken over by Discovery. And there are a couple of interesting developments that have come out regarding that that I thought we should talk about here pretty quickly. First of all, it should be pointed out that really the last major hurdle for this acquisition has now been cleared. The Discovery shareholders, and this a lot of people saw this as a technicality, but the Discovery shareholders have now approved the $43 billion acquisition. Now, of course, the shareholders have to approve it because it's their effing money. So they got to say, yes, we approve this $43 billion takeover. And by the way, it is actually more expensive than $43 billion because they got to pay $43 billion to get the company, to get Warner Media. But in acquiring Warner Media, they're also taking on $45 billion of Warner Media's debt. That's how much they're in debt. So this is a huge financial commitment uh, coming from Discovery over that. And the last major hurdle has now been cleared. Now, this gives us a little bit of the outline as to what we're going to be getting. This is coming from Roddy Rights. Discovery Chief David Zaslav will serve as the president and CEO of the newly merged company. Of course, David Zaslav is the head of Discovery. So now he's going to become the head of everything. Uh, Warner Media Discovery with Warner Media CEO John Kalar or Jason Kalar expected to exit. Uh, Zaslav's first major hire for Warner Brothers Discovery was Chris Litch, who's going to be the new chief of CNN. Following the ousting of Jeff Zucker, we talked about that a little bit earlier. But this is where it gets really interesting. We're talking about the financials here. Because, Rob, you and I have talked about before the fact that right now, the way streaming works right now is not long-term sustainable. No. And, no, like financially, there every streaming company is heading towards a giant cliff financially. They're, do, they're all operating right now in massive spending that cannot last long term. And they know that. But I think these numbers we're about to look at really give us kind of <laughs> rude awakening for just how bad the scenario really is. Oh, it's bad. It, it's, it's pretty bad right now. So we go back over here. We take a look at this. Listen to this. Discovery ended 2021 with four billion in cash on its books and it generated some 2.4 billion in free cash flow for the year you want to talk about the streaming networks that's actually doing it right and being the most financially successful it's actually discovery but at any rate warner brothers discovery uh will shoulder significant debt after the transaction is complete with discovery executives vowing to reduce the leverage ratio listen to this listen to what warner media's debt to to revenue ratio is with um uh, discovery will shoulder significant debt after the transaction is complete with discovery executives vowing to reduce the leverage ratio from about 4.5 times earnings immediately after the deal closes to 2.5 to three times earnings within two years. At close of the Warner Media spinoff, AT&T expects to, re to recap 43 billion and the new Warner Brothers Discovery to assume up to 43 billion of additional debt. I said 45 earlier, I meant to say 43. AT&T aims to use the proceeds from the Warner Media spinoff to pay down net debt, which stood at 156.2 billion at the end of 2021. All right, understand this. What they're saying is Warner Media is in debt 4.5 times to what their actual revenue is. And the first big goal of Discovery, which operates in the black, is saying, okay, we're going to get that down real quick. We're going to start by getting that down to 2.5 to three times, and then we will move on from there. Kind of highlighting why Zaslav, I've been saying now that Big Papa Iger's out of the picture, Zaslav is the smartest guy in this business. When you look at the way that he runs Discovery and what he's done there and his already initial plans moving forward, 
with what he's going to do with Warner Media and their whole debt situation, stuff like that. And we heard him talk about, we're not going to get in the spending wars, okay? We're going to be a successful streaming empire, but we're not going to get involved in the spending wars that everybody else seems to be getting into. Like, this dude's pretty damn brilliant. He's got his feet on the ground. But what gets more interesting, I think, for a lot of people is that Zaslav is already kind of putting together what's going to be his executive team. Now, as of right now, he cannot make any decisions for Warner Brothers. He cannot be involved in Warner Brothers in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, it's just now the his own shareholders even approved that they could take over the company, which I believe they said sometime in April or May this whole thing will be completed. But he's already starting to eye what the big senior staff management is. And I think for what a lot of film fans who keep a close eye on like Warner Bros and everything is what's going to happen with the people that they already have. Like what's going to happen with the people that are there right now. And I just want to find where I found this. Uh, where's this part I was looking for. Okay, here we go. This part is interesting because it speaks to a couple of things, including, you know, some people have been asking like, Oh, will, um, will discovery restore the Snyderverse and all that kind of stuff. I think we may actually have some insight here as to that. This is what Deadline is writing, and this is interesting. There are also going to be some significant incumbents to consider. Casey Bloys, who started at HBO in 2004, has been overseeing both HBO and HBO Max after the high-profile exits of Richard Felper and Kevin Riley three years ago, earning public shout-outs from Zaslav along the way. Now, Bloys, by the way, in all the criticism that I've leveled against you know, Warner Brothers' strategy of putting all their 2021 films on HBO Max, that was not HBO Max's fault. No. That was not them. And actually, this guy, Bloys, has been getting a lot of kudos from a lot of people about the way he has managed HBO Max in the last couple of years. So he's probably going to be somebody who's going to probably stay in charge of HBO Max. We'll see, though. Warner Brothers Pictures chief Toby Emmerich, this is where a lot more people get interested, has also been a canny survivor. Climbing the ladder, even as his former home, New Line, was summed into the Warner machine. In the final year of his current contract, he has more than a few hits to, to, to point to. Most recently, The Batman. And Sarnoff, chair and CEO of Warner Media Studios and Networks Group, uh, is newer to the fold by comparison, having joined Warner in 2019. She oversees a lot of the valuable turf across film and TV, especially with Warner still in the licensing game. So... The big head honcho of Warner Media, Jason Kalar, he's out. As soon as this merger finalizes, he's out. However, some of his top generals, Bloys, Emmerich, Sarnoff, there's a lot of whispers that Zaslav could absolutely keep them in place, at least for a while. Uh, the deadline also goes on to write, a grace period of some duration is likely to be extended to Sarnoff, Emmerich, and Bloys as the merger takes effect, according to multiple people involved in the del deliberations. So, Rob, you hear that these three are probably going to be sticking around with Kalar out. What does that tell you right away? Well, I've heard that it was Toby Emmerich's idea to do the HBO day and date thing because he was trying to ingratiate himself with an idea. Right. I heard differently, but I remember you had, but I don't know that my source was anymore. Yeah, yeah again, again I don't yours, know. To be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like they said in this article that you just read, Toby Emmerich is a canny survivor. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people are, the writing's on the wall. The major studios, as they exist currently, are in the middle of major upheaval because streaming is now the final destination. That's where everybody's going to. That's where everything is moving to. All these movies, it doesn't matter what, what movies are being made, whether they go theatrical or not, they all wind up on streaming. So ultimately, the streamers are where the power is moving to in Hollywood. So it's almost like a game of musical chairs. The studio executives... Can they transition out of a movie studio over to a streamer? Are they going to be able to do that? It's going to be really interesting to see who survives all of this. And I'm curious. I mean, Toby Emmerich, maybe because he has so many. If you look at Toby Emmerich's credits, if you go to the IMDb and look at it, he's got like over 100 credits. He even I think if memory served, he wrote the movie Frequency. The Dennis, really? I didn't know that. I think he did. I think he was. The, I think if memory serves, that he was the screenwriter. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good movie. And, pretty it, good and movie. they turned it into a TV series. So you know, um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But he's got like over a hundred credits as a producer. Right. So he's running a studio, and so that's a guy. He's pretty formidable as far as it goes, and he's a survivor. So it'll be interesting to see what they so what they decide to do. I don't know if Ann Sarnoff's going to stick around because she's only been there for th three years, but we'll see. You know, she's a smart lady, too. So, 
And I think Zaz, because you know, remember Zaslav himself comes out of NBC Universal, so I think he's got a lot of respect for what they do over there. I also think it's interesting. You know, a lot of people have been wondering, and I only bring this up because I have gotten a lot of messages from people the last couple of days. Do you think this means? Do you think Discovery will restore the Snyderverse and all that kind of stuff? You, you got to remember that the predecessors to Sarnoff and and Kalar and stuff like that were the ones that greenlit the Zack Snyder Justice League, which some people believe is part of the reason why they got canned and fired afterwards in the new regime that came in. So I, look, who knows what the future holds, but I think anybody who's looking at Warner Brothers movies in DC and wondering if Discovery will restore the Snyderverse, I think that, I think the very fact that they're looking at keeping these people on pretty much points to no. It, it looks like whatever strategy they have right now right. is probably the one they're going to continue on with. What's so strange to me, though, about people talking about restore the Snyderverse? Well, it never went away. Snyder's Aquaman. Yeah, DCU's still here. Yeah, yeah, Snyder's Aquaman went on. Snyder's Wonder Woman went on. Snyder's The Flash went on. So if you want to talk about the Snyderverse, what people really want to see is Zack Snyder coming back and finishing off his With Justice some League. some people. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And look, I'm a huge fan of Zack Snyder's Justice League. I, I really quite enjoyed enjoyed it compared to what we, what we got. And I would love to see him finish off that story, but... People don't realize he's moved on to Netflix. He's got a sweet deal over there. They he's making Rebel Moon, this big sci-fi epic, you know, in the Star Wars vein. Why would why would he come, why would you want him as a creator to come back to Warner Brothers, a place that didn't exactly treat him well, where he's got a new place where he's making new original IP and he did Army of the Dead. He's doing Rebel Moon. I mean, I would be happy for where he's at now because we're gonna get something new and unique. Isn't that cool? I, I yeah, I still think Zack Snyder's Justice League is okay. I mean, it's definitely better. It's definitely better than the theatrical. Yeah, I, mean, I, it's like, not a, it's I not. like the theatrical version. I do. I like the theatrical. I have I have no qualms about that. I like the theatrical version. I think Snyder's version is better. But people underestimate his best movie. Well, yeah. Zack Snyder's you and I are, You and I are both. In, that's, the, that's the Zack Snyder film people sleep on. We're totally right there. simpatico. Why there is not another Superman movie is beyond it's, me. I mean, it's one of my great heartbreaks that we have, we don't have a Man of Steel 2. Anyway, Chris, there's a lot of information dump here. I mean, number one, you know, the way they're moving, the very fact that Zazov's saying Warner Media is going to be more financially responsible. He's already said he's very dedicated to theatrical to the theatrical industry. He he believes movies and theaters, then put it on streaming, all that kind of stuff. Looking at the way he's approaching this and the fact that it sounds like from these reports, he's looking at keeping at least the top generals mm -hmm. at Warner Brothers on board. What are the first impressions that you have from this story? I mean, this all sounds very good. But we have to see how everything pans out, right? Because right. everything right, sounds good. Exactly, and and you know, a deal is only as good as it's written on paper. A deal is only as good as it's actually executed, and so that's what it's all going to come down to. I like that we're not doing a big shakeup. I like that we're taking, uh, you know, a, a kind of slow and steady approach to everything, making sure that we've got all of our ducks lined up in a row. Oh, sorry, John, I knocked my camera before. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a lot of finesse. I don't know if everyone knew that. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I'm not informed enough on the ins and outs of this deal to have a hard opinion. As of right now, it's kind of a wait and see thing for me to see how everything pans out. All right, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about this? I mean, I guess I, I understand the business side of thing isn't the thing that gets everybody a hard on, but <laughs> like to me, it's incredibly fascinating stuff. The stuff that goes on behind the scenes, this is incredibly important stuff that results in what we will or will not see on the screens a little bit later on. How do you guys feel about the story? Whatever it is, jump on down to the comment section below and leave us your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a minute and thank the sponsor of today's video, the good folks at Keeps. Now look, you guys probably already know that two out of every three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're just 35 years old. Now that's where Keeps comes in because Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. That means the guys that use it love it. Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair. It's also low cost. Treatments start as low as just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions for the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. That means treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Remember, prevention is the key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so the sooner you act, the better. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less with Keeps. 
So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Campia to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Campia.